So around a year ago, I put together a video on my Ford Ranger pickup truck. It had a lot of problems. The top end of the engine wasn't receiving enough lubrication, and consequently, it was making a lot of noise. The lifters were very noisy. It sounded like a really bad valve tap. Together, the engine was in poor condition and using it that way the engine just wasn't going to last long. So I used both Seafoam as well as Lucas to see if it would help. Fortunately it made all the difference in the world and the engine began running normally again. Today what we're going to do is take a one year look. We're going to drain the oil, we're going to change out the filter, open up that filter, and we're going to do several other things to determine the health of the engine. So let's go ahead and take a look at the truck. So we're going to change the oil in this engine. We're also going to cut open the old oil filter to see if there's any contamination in it. We're also going to do a lubricity test on the old oil. Several have mentioned concerns about Lucas clumping up. So what we'll do is you look inside the oil pan using a boroscope to see if there's any sort of issue. Okay, the engine is cold, so I'm going to fire up the engine just to see how it sounds. So this oil has about 100 hours of use on it. I don't go by miles. This is a farm truck, so I spend a lot of time in low speeds and four-wheel drive, doing a lot of work around the farm. Lucas has a lot of tackiness to it, but I'm not seeing any tackiness with this oil any longer. So I'm just wondering if Lucas loses its tackiness once it's heated up, just like we saw in the barn chain oil video. I have a very powerful magnet on the end of this magnet stick, so I'm going to go ahead and run this through the oil. We're going to be looking for any sort of metal contamination. I don't have an efficient way of filtering out this oil, so I'm just going to use this magnet. It's going to be very difficult to see this on camera. There are some very small metal particles on this magnet. Hey, one thing I really like about YouTube is how interactive it is between myself and you guys watching the channel. I had several people recommend I buy a device designed to cut open a filter. In a previous video, I used a chisel and a hammer to open up a filter. Not very safe, and it's a lot of work. I'll leave a link to this on Amazon. I am not going to make any sort of money if you choose to buy the product. And I'm definitely not trying to sell products. That's not what I do. I am not sponsored by any company, and I plan to keep it that way. The way this works is there's a very sharp cutting edge, and there are two wheels that will rotate once the filter is in place, and that allows us to cut through the filter. It took me under a minute to open this filter up, and look how clean the cut that is. This thing did an amazing job. So if you ever want to look inside your oil filters, this is a pretty cheap device. You might consider getting one. It's a lot safer, and you don't end up contaminating the filter once you're in the process of opening it. I'm going to go ahead and remove the paper from this filter, and then we'll see if there's any metal contamination in it. It's very hard to look at these filters while there's oil in them, so I got a great tip from someone who suggested I place the filter in a vise and apply some pressure, which will remove most of the oil, allowing us to take a much closer look. I'm going to go ahead and take this filter out. We'll take a look at it. Look how much lighter color this is because the oil has been removed. Okay, this towel is pretty saturated from all the oil. Draining the oil out of this filter was a very good idea. So this side of the filter was collecting contamination. This is the inside of the filter that is on the clean side. And as you can tell, this filter collected a lot of contamination. Now, I believe what happened is the sea foam did a great job of breaking loose a lot of sludge and built up contamination. And as a result, this filter collected a lot of it. So what I need to do in the future is use seafoam again a time or two to continue to break loose the sludge and of course remove as much of that as possible so the engine will have good oil flow. 
So this appears to be engine sludge. This is not coming loose on the magnet. And there's a good chance if it's metal, it's probably absorbed so much in this filter that I can't break it free with this magnet anyway. But my assumption is that this is mainly all kinds of sludge that's been built up in the engine for many years that Seafoam has helped break free. So this is a used oil we just pulled out of the engine. What I'm going to do now is pour this into the cup and do a lubricity test on it. I use synthetic oil as well as Lucas, which helps explain why there's less scoring on the bearing on the right compared to the 10W30 conventional. So seafoam can be added before or after an oil change. In this case, we've already changed the oil, so I'm going to go ahead and add five ounces of seafoam to the oil. This will definitely thin out the oil some, but I've still got some sludge in the engine that I want to attack and get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead and add the seafoam to the fresh oil. So a year ago before using Seafoam, I had a significant problem with the Ford Ranger engine. The engine was making a lot of noise in the top end. Clearly it just wasn't getting oil. Now I didn't know what to do besides try some sort of a crankcase cleaner, so I decided on trying Seafoam. I used sort of a triple Seafoam as well as a Lucas approach and it worked great. Now I give Seafoam the majority of the credit for helping the engine. I decided not to go back with Lucas this time just because Lucas makes the oil a little bit thicker and thick oil in the winter time is an issue. I don't plan to change this oil just because I don't use it enough. So I'm gonna use this oil for at least probably nine months to a year before the next oil change. So again, I'm not dogging Lucas. I think it's a great product, but in my situation, I don't think the truck engine really needs it. So today I decided to do a compression test on one cylinder. I didn't have it on camera, but it was a little bit low at 130 PSI. So I'd like your opinion on what product I should use to help restore compression. Now we know engine restore works, so I'd sort of like to mix it up and try a different product. As many of you know, I'm a big skeptic of these oil additives and products. I don't think too many of them work, but if there's one you really think works, please leave a comment and we can give it a try. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. Please take care. I look forward to seeing you next time.